What's up, guys? This is the Mac and MC Show with Joshua McMillan and Mac Hereford talking Tide football, SEC football, and more. We got a good show today, boys. Josh, good show, good show, good show today. So, so where where you want to start? Because it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of content out here. I mean, unfortunately, Alabama isn't in a CFB playoff. I mean, we're, we're tremendously sad about that. But let's talk about who's in that CFB playoff. Yeah, first of all, I do want to say, Josh. Before mm-hmm. we get, yeah, I guess I guess it all comes into one. But Alabama did not make the CFP, and I want to start mm-hmm. off. I have a lot of thoughts on this. This is my opinion in general. Okay, you have it's supposed to be the four best teams in college football. If you're telling Correct. me that Alabama is not one of those teams, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. You're just wrong so because wrong. It, the, Coach Saban made the made the point. He said, "Look, if you put Alabama against most of those teams, I think they would be favored, in my opinion, against every team but Georgia." And so, if you're talking exactly. the best four teams get in. Alabama should be in. So I'm not I'm not actually like I'm pretty upset about it. I'm like, dang, the best four teams should be in. Alabama should be in. But then again, on the other side of things, I'm not mm-hmm. whining. I'm not complaining. We lost two games. We did have a lot of players hurt during the season. We weren't at our best. But back to my old point, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you want the four best teams. Alabama is one of those teams. So that, that's what I, those are my thoughts on it. I mean, kind of my thoughts. It's about how you finish the season. Alabama. They took two hits kind of early on in the season. Really not early, but kind of midseason. Came back strong against Auburn. And then now we have Ohio State playing Michigan. And they just get blew out at home. At home. And then we have at home, like 20 points. Michigan ran through them. Came into their stadium and their field and just said, hey, this ours. Y'all, y'all ain't taking none of this. And then TCU loses to K-State. Come on, man. And Alabama's supposed to be up there. You put them at three. This is what makes me mad. But I will tell you this. When I was watching the CFP selection show, I said I know TCU is going to be number three. You know why? Because mm-hmm. the best matchup they can make is going to be Georgia-Ohio State. Yes. And then, you know, TCU-Michigan. That's what's going to – like, TCU and Michigan, I feel like, is a good matchup. But I feel like if they put TCU at number four, which I think mm-hmm. is realistically where they should be, if not five, six, whatever – Mm-hmm. I think that you have TCU playing Georgia. Georgia blows them out. So it doesn't fit the narrative. You know, exactly. I, I think they had to fit the narrative. What's going to get the most views in this situation? Um, and so it's disappointing. But then at the end of the day, like I said, Coach Saban always used to tell us all the time, you got to be in control of your destiny, you know? Yes. And yeah. they didn't do the things this year that should have put them in the position to be in control of their destiny. You know, they yeah. had to leave it up to the committee, which is not the mm-hmm. position you want to be in as a, as a head coach. Um and we made Knocking mistakes. at the door trying to get in. Yeah, like, we, we we made mistakes this year. There's games we easily could have won, even with our team being battered and hurt during the season. Um, but it just it's disappointing because again, you know, when we talk about the top four teams. I mean, exactly. I'm I'm disappointed. I mean, I feel like this was supposed to be the year. Uh, we were bringing back Bryce Young. We were bringing back Will Anderson, the Heisman winner. And, like, we just don't go off to the playoffs and, you know, win a national championship, at least contend for one. I mean, I just feel like a lot of the players on the field, like, kind of got so short this year. My heart kind of goes out to them, like, hey, this is why you came here to be put in those situations to win national championships, but it doesn't always happen. Like, I mean, but you have to be able to take a lesson from this, take that lick in the mouth, and get back to it next year. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly the thing. Like, they got to be able to just realize, like, look, they had opportunities this year. Hopefully Mm -hmm. they make the most out of them next year. Um, But what was the thing I was going to just talk about, about the Alabama, like, in general, not making it throughout the season? Like, their home team, The well, before we get to Sugar Bowl, they only lost their margin or, you know, whatever, lost by only by four, and it was Mm -hmm. two away games in SEC environments. So it's just like, I don't know. At the end of the day, again, I think you have to have the best four teams in there. Alabama should be in there. But I'm not necessarily, like, so upset and not saying, like, Mm -hmm. screw everybody or anything like that. The other thing I wanted to bring up, and it just came back into my mind, is Coach Saban. So Mm -hmm. what did you think? Because there's a lot of people talking about it. I saw Barstool posted something. I I saw someone else post something. They're like, Coach Saban seems so sorry for doing this, blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. Why is Coach Saban venting on there, like, trying to get Alabama's team in there? My thing is, bro, and I want to hear your opinion too, Josh, but mm-hmm. Coach Saban wants his team to get in the into the national championship. If there's anything he can do to get them in do the national championship, it. do it. Like, why exactly. is how is that bad? How is that wrong? 
It's just because I think there's that standard and expectation that Alabama is always supposed to just be the, the best and mm -hmm. not have to do that. But, like, if, if I'm coaching a team and you're mm -hmm. asking me, like, should they get in the playoffs, like, or if I know that it might help a little bit if I talk about them and, and vent or, you know, on their behalf, say they mm -hmm. should get in the playoffs, that that's going to help. Oh, I'm going to do everything I can do to get them in. Everything. I mean, if you ask me, I'm a, I'm a bat for my players. Like, hey, I'm the head guy. I'm the face of this organization. So I'm going to put my kids in the best position in order for them to, to win and contend for a national championship. So it just takes me back to Georgia back in 2018. They lost to us in the SEC championship. Kirby's up there trying to fat, fight and, and bat for his, his, his players. And, I mean, that's only right. You still want to be able to have that chance to play in the national championship. You still want to be able to have that chance to get revenge on the team that you just got beat by. And then prove to everybody that you are, and you you have that it factor. You are the number one team. So I just feel like, you know, everyone kind of gets into that, get, gets into that position to where, hey, look, kind of got to cover up your excuses or cover up some of your mistakes that you made early on in the season because you all weren't fully capable. You all weren't aware of what you all had to do at that moment. Yeah, I, I mean, just I, I would respect if another coach wanted to do that, even if it was a team mm -hmm. way back in the rankings. I wouldn't mm -hmm. care. I would still respect it. He's he's vouching for his players. You know what I'm saying? It shows that he cares about the team, wants those guys to do well. And I, I do feel for the guys because I feel like when we were there in our times at Alabama, you know, when we go to a national championship, it just felt like it was normal. Like that's the standard mm -hmm. of excellence at Alabama year after year. We're in the national championship. We're winning games. So I think you see less fans travel as that happens. And what I was mm -hmm. excited about is, look, if Alabama makes it in this year, you're going to see the fan base. They will oh, be yeah. there. They will show up. Everywhere. Like I Everywhere. Mean they're traveling across the country I, I tell you that like first game 2015 here at alabama we had it at arizona half of the stands were crimson fans cheering i, I was just shocked I, I couldn't believe that here we are playing a national championship across country and people are still out there they're traveling they're coming to the game like the fan base is definitely there yeah and this year like i said like because it wasn't expected that we get in Mm -hmm. And if we would have gotten in, one, everyone in the whole country would have gone crazy because they're all scared that Alabama was going to get in. Everyone was fearing for their lives that Alabama was going to make it in. But it was funny watching that whole thing. Like, everything is exploding, people going nuts and crazy. But, uh, you know, if Alabama would have made it in, I think you would have seen more and more fans show up than usual just because they would be like, dang, like, you know, we didn't necessarily have that chance. Just because, again, every year it's expected. Like, that's Alabama. The standard is expecting a national championship, expecting mm -hmm. being the, the top of college football year in and year out. Um, but you you mentioned during that thing, you were talking about players, and you were talking about players coming back. You know, hopefully mm -hmm. guys take what they learned this year. With that being said, there's a lot of guys who entered the transfer portal. We had, I mm -hmm. think, like 10-plus guys, maybe more, who've entered the portal. And I want to talk about that. Like, what are your thoughts on guys, one, entering the transfer portal? They're doing it from everywhere. Every team's mm -hmm. doing it. But especially Alabama, like, what would you tell those guys – is you and me both being guys who had to wait our turn to, you know, get opportunities mm -hmm. and things like that. Like, what are your thoughts? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Nick Saban had a quote he said maybe probably a couple of days ago that something may have went on in that locker room this year that doesn't go on every year. He, I felt like he hadn't really made a connection with the players, a connection with the players like he's always done in, in his past history. A lot of these guys are, are a little frustrated. Hey, they're not getting the ball. Plays aren't, aren't coming their way. So they go to Coach Saban and they don't get their way. Transfer portal is, you know, big thing now. You can just leave. And, I mean, people are not really buying into the values. Yeah. You know, like, hey, you have to go You have to go in there and fight. I had to go every day and fight for my position on, on, on the roster. I mean, like, how, if for, you, for you, what was it that kept you there? Because you're, like – your perfect example of a guy who stuck it out. If it was this easy, would you have considered it? If it was this easy just to jump in the transfer portal? Or do you think it would, you would just stuck it out like you did? Because you you were there for a long time. You put in your time. You knew the plays. Mm -hmm. You knew the system. You're a big mm -hmm. guy. Like, you're a good linebacker. What was it that kept you there, you know? Uh, really, I, I gave the University of Alabama my commitment back in 2014 or wherever I, I committed, I gave them, I, I wanted to honor my commitment to them. I wanted to be at the university until I at least got my degree. 
And I wanted to be able to say I, I put in my time and my heart, effort, blood, sweat, and tears on that football field, and I did it with my brothers. And we all won national championships together. I didn't want to go anywhere else and play anywhere else. I wanted to live up to that standard on that field and be one of those guys. I wanted to be a first rounder. I wanted to be a Reuben Foster. I wanted to be a Sean Dion Hamilton. I wanted to be an Anthony Jennings. These are guys who I hung around. They were in my circle every day. And I just fed off that energy. I wanted to be amongst those guys who were the Alabama standard. And what do you and think? Like, so th that's a great point. Like, what do you think makes that difference now? Because I, one, one, there's not a lot of people. A, a lot mm -hmm. of people are different. It depends on the type of person because you mm -hmm. got guys like you. Like, and I, I would like to say I was the same way. Like, I really wanted to just be there with the boys, like be there with the squad. I felt like a passion, mm -hmm. you know, a connection with all my teammates where we yeah. I, truly invested. You definitely yeah. invested in Alabama mm -hmm. standard in what Alabama is, the process. But do you think that this new NIL stuff, kind of making players feel more independent, getting these mm -hmm. other opportunities. Do you think that's the problem? Or do you think we just maybe have like something going on in the locker room, just some bad seeds that potentially can be dragging others down? Uh, two things. I think NIL deal, well, the NIL contract or whatever is, is going to ruin college football because now you, you don't have guys coming in together as a class building bonds and creating relationships showing that you can trust and love your brother out on the field and outside the field. So that's one thing you get this guy who hasn't been in an organization for, you know, four years and you put him with the other guy who they don't really have a great chemistry. So things tend to not line up on that end. And then point two, I mean, you kind of, NIL itself, like it, it just makes you think, Hey, players aren't really important. You want these guys that, Oh, Bryce Young got the got the million dollar deal. He he's he's rocking the chains. To, he he has all the endorsements. And then you know you got regular average Joe over here that doesn't you know he isn't Bryce Young caliber, but you know he's still a good player. But he doesn't have he doesn't have all the tangibles, all, everything, all the talents that Bryce Young has. And he's gonna feel like he he deserves that. He yep. feels like hey, I'm in the same locker room with this guy. I feel like I should get a little piece of, of the pie too. You know, like I'm I'm not a bad player. So I just feel like that's going to cause for there to be a little riff in the locker room and people are going to not, you know, respect the players. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to respect each other and that's going to hurt the team. Yeah. You brought up a really, like a really good points in there that I want to hit on, especially the fact that like NIL and all, I don't think mm -hmm. it's necessarily a bad, I think that yes, players deserve to get paid something. Now, yeah, like for you, sure. they get the education, which is, a, which is expensive. A lot of people don't think about that. I remember mm -hmm. one time they set us down in the Alabama team meeting room. And they explained to us all the expenses that they occur mm -hmm. over time because of us. Flights, travel, buses, mm -hmm. police escorts, food. <laughs> food. Like all these things is a lot of money. And they're doing a lot of great mm -hmm. things for us. And so I, I get that. And then they're also, the pro program does make a lot of money. And so you've mm -hmm. got to think maybe there is something you can do. I just think the NIL moves so quickly that it's caused yes. a little bit of a problem. Um, mm -hmm. And stuff like that. Because exactly what you mentioned, like, I can remember myself, like even at times, like other players who are stars, they get, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like they got privileges. And I, I was putting yeah. in the time. We both put in the time. You know what I'm saying? Day after yeah, day, sure. we're putting for in sure. the same yeah. hours, if not more hours. So I can mm -hmm. see how someone would be upset when they see someone making all this money, making all this bread, you know, got mm -hmm. all this stuff. Like, why can't I even get a little bit of that? I completely agree. So maybe that's the reason. I don't know. It's interesting. But while we're on this thing of the transfer portal, uh, mm -hmm. my thing too, my advice to players right now is like, at the end of the day, I can see it from both ways. I think that some people have personal reasons, family reasons, whatever it may be to have to make a decision to change somewhere else where it's the best interest of them. And if they can explain that, then great. But I do think, I wish we saw more and more today of people just really buying in and investing, especially in, sure. in, in Alabama. Um, but sure. let's talk Deion Sanders. We're talking transfer mm. portal. Yes. That word, that word keeps us up. Deion Sanders just got the job. Colorado, mm -hmm. right? Colorado. In Love Colorado. It. We just talked about it the week before. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning Deion. TJ Simmons was mentioning Deion that he was ready for this big next step. What do you mm -hmm. know? Bang. He's got this job at Colorado. Um, and, you know. I think you got to respect the guy. I mean, he went to Jackson State University, a black coach at a HBCU, only bringing in 300K. He took a pay cut and gave half of his money 
to the university and said finish doing everything for the university because you know he got he, he got money like that he spent years in the league Dion Dion he he gets them endorsements with Under Armour he basically transforms yeah. this whole entire program and now he he wants better for himself I mean he can't stay at Jackson State and then get all the resources he he can I mean they they don't they don't, they're not just they're not bringing in their money into the athletic department right now so he he takes a chance he takes a risk and he goes to colorado and he gets a good deal what i feel like he's now he's good he's jumping from 300k to five mil a year it's a big jump and you know you know what he took it he took his bags he, he said hey i got a louis bag and, and i got my players up here so if y'all boys ain't with what i got going because he obviously doing something right oh, he told them boys pack their bags man so let's think about this Let's think about this. I, I think everything you said about Dion is, is is right on that aspect. Like, look, if he's got a good, if let's put ourselves in the in the shoes of the Jackson State players, who mm -hmm, he probably mm -hmm. said, you know, I'm going to be here. He recruits them. He's got guys coming. Say we're there at Jackson State. We know not all of us could transfer. How yeah. we feel, I think both of us, and I think from the way you're talking about it, we would understand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, that's what I believe. I think like sometimes, especially at Alabama, things happen. Like we had coaches leave and go. We didn't even know until the, the news that came out on the news yeah, or something, exactly. which is crazy. But I think a lot of the times, like some people get a little bit upset about it because coaches do promise mm -hmm. things, but players promise things too. So I think it works both awesome. ways. And it's just yeah. a situation where you always got to look and say, you know what? That person is truly doing something in their best interest, interest mm -hmm. which Deion Sanders was doing. So I think if we were players, we'd be understanding that locker room. Now mm -hmm. we go to the, the point where say we're putting these seats, we're in mm -hmm. Colorado, we're sitting in the seats just like we were at Alabama in the team meeting room. And say mm -hmm. we got a new coach come in, head coach. Yeah. We don't know him. He hasn't proved himself at our university. He, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? We've seen him do his thing at Jackson State. But he comes in there and he literally says, y'all can go enter the transfer portal. I'm bringing dogs with me. Like, I'm bringing guys with me. Quarterback mm -hmm. right here, he's going to have to earn it. But practically says, his, you know, his son's he's he's the starting starter. quarterback. <laughs> he's, saying, he's saying all this other stuff. What do we feel like? What are your thoughts Cause I, like I have some thoughts, but I'm gonna let you go first. Imagine that. Put yourself in that scenario. Tell me how you feel, and then I'll tell you how I feel about it. I'm gonna be scratching my head like this. Like now nah, he Dion, but you know, like hey, look, that, that's them some words right there. But I'm gonna also step up to that challenge. I'm not gonna let anybody come and run me out of my school or my position or anything. So I think. Dion is sort of kind of playing a mental game with them almost when he's saying that. Like, hey, look, if you don't think you're ready, I'm going to push you. And if you don't think you can handle it, go. Like, you know, he, you got, you kind of got to understand where he's coming from. He's going to want the best for you at the end of the day, but he also wants you to want the best for you. And if you don't feel like you can push yourself and, and give him all 110% of what, what he's got going, my guy Lee. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel pretty similar. Like, again, my initial thought is a player. Mm -hmm. I think you can think a couple of ways. I think guys can yeah. look and say like when, so when Dion comes in there and he says, look, pack y'all's bags, head to the transfer portal. If you need to, I would have mm -hmm. seen, I would have seen that as an invitation to be great and an invitation to a challenge. Just like you said, oh, I yeah. would be like, I got that dog. I mean, I'd be like, okay, like he thinks yeah. he can come in here. He thinks he can have someone take my spot. Like no chance. Mm -hmm. And I think like you're saying, that's what he was trying to do. I think some of the most mm -hmm. successful coaches, like Coach Saban yeah. has the ability to say things to get you mm -hmm. act a certain way. And in that yeah. situation, you have a you have a, a chance to be a victim or you have a chance mm -hmm. to be someone who's going to dominate, stand up to the challenge at hand. So he mm -hmm. gave them that opportunity. If someone's trying to be the victim, yeah. oh, poor me, like Dion came in, he's telling mm -hmm. me I'm not going to get my job. He probably yeah. doesn't want you any – he probably doesn't want you there anyway. Anyway, so exactly. It, for him, it works out well. Good, leave. Then mm -hmm. if you're a guy who's like, I'm ready for this challenge, I want to be a part of Deion Sanders' team, great. Mm -hmm. He's going to make you a great player. So – I'm excited to see what he does at Colorado. I think it's going to be, you know, awesome. I think he's going to turn turn that program around. I think the guys mm -hmm. he's bringing with them are great. So I'm excited yes, to see those sure. guys at the higher level compete. So I'm mm -hmm. excited in general. Um, really cool news. And I, I think I think it'll be good. I, I definitely think you'll see Buffalo probably in the, in, in the top five pretty soon. Wait, is like, it Buffalo I'm not or Colorado? Colorado, Colorado, I said Buffalo, yeah, my bad. Colorado boulders. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I definitely think you're saying Colorado at least competing in the top five pretty soon. Pretty soon, if you ask me.
he, he's going to get up there. He's going to change the whole culture. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I don't want to put a like direct estimate on time, but I I was going to say that too. I think mm -hmm. in a couple of years, whether it's next year, the next year, I think it'll take him like a time, a little bit of time. I think we'll see mm -hmm. that program be a top notch program, and I would see him, you know, moving up pretty quickly in the ranks to being able to get an even higher and you know better paid job in college football. He he he's he's like he's one of those guys you see and you're like, he's got it going oh, yeah. on. Yeah, he's going to be in the next couple of years. He's going to be, you know, on the same level as these big time coaches that have been in the, you know, college football for a long time. Um, so I'm excited. How long before, yeah, before you go that? now? Uh, like, did you see Trey Sanders hit up? You know, I did. Some, uh, We're on, talking on Alabama transfers. We got Trey Sanders, Alabama running, running back. back was a five star set. Didn't he say he would get the Heisman as well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he came. He he was saying in high school, "Hey, I'm the next Heisman Heisman winner at Alabama." <laughs> and I will say, as we're speaking on Trey, great guy, oh, yeah. great, great player, guy. Mm -hmm. really good player. I thought he was explosive. Tough stint with some injuries, which really stinks. But yeah. yes, I saw him tweet out. For those of you who don't know, Trey Sanders tweeted out online on Twitter, said something like, "What do you say, Josh? You you ready for me, Unc? Like at like, yeah. hey, you got enough room for me, Unc? That's yep. what he said." <laughs> Which is exciting, but, you know. What, what, are you, what are you gonna say, my bad? I mean, just I, I think that'll be great for him. I, I think he's definitely the type of back that would can come in and kind of give them a little bit of a, a, a change. I mean, he's he's very explosive. He had a few injuries, like he said, but I definitely think he's he's your three down back that's gonna definitely make changes in your program early. Yeah, and so I, I think, I think wait, that'd yeah, be a good look. A hundred percent, and I think too. Like you're talking about these things that, you know, he's he's a fast back, he's good, he's talented, mm -hmm. but you also got to think about the fact of, look, we got a guy here who's been in the Alabama process mm -hmm. for however many years. There's a lot with that that people don't think about. When you get a guy from Alabama, you're getting a guy full of knowledge that you can really tap into and see well what's going on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well groomed. <laughs> like TJ Simmons was saying, he was tucking his shirt in at, at West mm -hmm. Virginia, and people were like, what the heck? So when you get a guy like Trey Sanders, when you get an Alabama transfer, you're getting mm -hmm. a lot more than a guy who's just got talent. You're getting a guy who's been in a program, been invested in something, and, you know, knows the standard of how things should be. And he's going to bring that mentality. Like, hey, I don't care who you are. I'm out here to get on this field, and you're not going to stop me. And and they're there with that mission and their goal, and they're they're not going to stop. Like, they don't care. They, they know what they need to do to buy in to the principles to live up to the standard. That Alabama has been preaching for a very long time now. So I'm it the boy got it and, and he finna he finna do some things. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he ends up there with uh Dion. That'd be awesome to see him do it because I know he'd do some big things. I think they would have a lot of good chemistry and I could see him really balling out. So I wish and and that's the thing too. No hard feelings to the guys who did transfer. I know we talked about mm -hmm. that earlier, but like at the same time, everyone has a different story, different mm -hmm. things going on. And until you really know and fully can take in, you know, what's going on in their head, what's happening with their family, what makes mm -hmm. the best decision for them. It's not like, our, in my opinion, it's not my place to say like, oh, they're wrong for that. They're not. Yeah. But I would like to encourage people to be invested because I feel like some players are soft these days. Oh, yeah. And I'm not afraid to say that. But uh, <laughs> Moving on. I mean, Wait, what were you going to say? It's, it's just the guys just buying, like, they're more bought into themselves. You yep. know, it's not, it's not about the university or the school you're at. Hey, look. I want to go to the NFL. I want to play football. So you kind of kind of got to respect some of these guys. They want to put themselves in the best positions so they can succeed. They have families. They have kids that they need to feed when it's all said and done at nighttime. So respect to all y'all decisions. Hey, you're the only one who can make it. Exactly. That's the same way I am about it. Although, again, I would like to see more. Stay in Alabama. I think stay in Alabama, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> That was funny because you just did that really nice. That whole thing, like, <laughs> basically, like screw it. Nah, uh, I, I mean, I would say looking back at it, like for a lot of guys, when we're mm -hmm. talking about transferring, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult process. You know, even though I like played my Ford Alabama, gave my time, and I don't feel like a true transfer, or, like one of those people who jumped in, you know, during their like early years. Cause I think it's a mm -hmm. difference when you go four years because you played, you're giving your time. Like same with like Jalen Hurts. Like I think, yeah, put in his time, he did his thing. He'll always be remembered that Alabama's an Alabama guy. Mm -hmm. Um, but when we talk about that kind of stuff, it's a hard process transfer. And I don't think a lot of these guys know. And now it's this big, just whirlwind. I can't even yeah. imagine what's going on in the transfer portal. Like coaches just jumping out left and right. Like it's a whole new recruiting process. You got to get into another school. So mm -hmm. I would tell people to think about that aspect. 
And then two, yeah. just think about like the fact if you're thinking about ever transferring, like the University of Alabama, there's nothing like it. You know what I mean? And yeah, you you're gonna not, be sad when you leave it. You you will not get the same benefits everywhere, people. You, you will not. not. <laughs> I can tell you that, folks. You will not get the same benefits. Um, but Josh, moving on, Alabama obviously didn't make the CFP. We already talked about that. They mm -hmm. are going to the Sugar Bowl to play Kansas State. Um, yes. Be an interesting game. But how do you feel about all these guys entering into the transfer portal? Do you feel like that would affect us at the end of the season? We don't have Treshawn Holden. We don't have uh, Kyrie Jackson. Like Kyrie Jackson. Uh, we just lost one by guards. Uh, Cohen. Yeah, so okay. how, how, how do you – Honestly, I feel like that would kind of affect us in this bowl game. Yeah, I guess going into to thinking about this bowl game, I hope, I really hope guys take it seriously. I don't want to mm -hmm. see what happened that one year. I think before I got to Al – it was before I got to Alabama, but I went to oh, the yeah. game when oh, Alabama yeah. played Oklahoma or someone like that, mm -hmm. some team, and got yeah. blown out. Like similar situation where we could have made the natty, sure. but – and we got blown out. So I don't – I really do hope, and I, like my mm -hmm. message, I hope players can see this or hear this. Please be bought in for this last game and stomp mm -hmm. Kansas State to the ground just to prove everybody right. I hope they do yeah. that. But talking about your transfer thing, I don't know. I mean, I think it definitely affects things. But then again, you know how mm -hmm. Alabama is. It's like mm -hmm. people want to transfer. They want to do their own thing. Like, it's kind of crazy. Like, you, you, you're you yeah, like, right. dang, like, my friend just left. Yeah, they the keep reloading. <laughs> It's back to work. You don't even like realize that person is gone because they got another guy coming right in, doing yeah. his job, doing his thing, practice running smoothly. At least that's how yeah. it was for us. Like I literally remember guys' lockers being just like cleaned out, and it's like mm -hmm. you just moved on. Like it was yeah. sad. Like there's some good, you know, that. you miss that, you miss that person, and you you're mm -hmm. like, dang, they're not there. But like life moves on, and especially moves really on. fast at Alabama. <laughs> Alabama. I mean, yeah, like you said. It's this next man, they got they got the same person who can do the same thing, if not better, that's ready to go in there and and there's not a drop off. So I don't all. yeah, I don't think it'll it'll hurt us too much. I think the main thing is whether mm -hmm. the team is just invested or not. And I hope they are. Again, like I think we did a great job when we played Michigan in that bowl game, my final season at Alabama with Mac Jones a quarterback. Because we came out mm -hmm. there, we we played a solid game, we competed. I think guys were excited for the experience. There was a little bit less pressure, I felt like, than it would have been in the national championship. Um, mm -hmm. And that trip was great. But, yeah, yeah, to answer it all, I don't think it should have a big effect. I think the biggest thing is just if the team is willing to just ball out and mm -hmm. play. Like, what would you think? If we were on the team right now, would we really care? Like, I don't know. I, I think, personally, I've got my opinion, but I want to hear yours, your thoughts. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm bought in. I, I We may not get a ring at the end, but, you know, like, hey, my – my jersey, my name, my name is on the back of that jersey. Like that's that's a part of my resume. And when I step on the field, I'm adding to my resume at all times. I'm not taking away. So I just feel like, hey, you finished the season out. You you came in as a team together. You finish as a team together. And if it's if it's what what it's supposed to be, everything y'all will get the victory at the end, and it should be good. You turn around, you go to the league, or you you get right back in that process, and you get ready to work. For the for the national championship next year, and that's how I feel. Yeah, I like I said, like I in the way I felt when we didn't make it to the championship, my final season, it was disappointing. I was like, dang, I really wish we would have made it to the national championship. But like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we put in this hard work, and and this is what I would hope the team would feel like this year. They put in this hard work. They had a good season. You know, Alabama is such a high expectation. So people are like, mm -hmm. oh, two losses, but they had a great season. At the end of the day, like yeah, we we messed up. We had some games we could have won, but. The guys battled. They played a, a good season overall. You got an mm -hmm. experience. The bowl games are so much fun with your friends, man. Like, that's they the are. best time. Like, you create memories that last a lifetime. And I think For that, sure. like, I just hope guys remember and know, one, this is the last time. This could be the last time I ever put on pads, you know, mm -hmm. this for the seniors, the older guys, and then for the other guys, just like, look, like, this is your last time. You're going to play with some of those guys. So you make, you mm -hmm. make it meaningful. Go out there, finish the season off with a bang. Don't do what a lot of teams do and just kind of don't care. I would be mm -hmm. telling the guys, like, look, like, be bought in. Let's finish this thing. Like, let's build up some, like, camaraderie. Let's show people, like, yeah, we wish we could have made it in. We thought we should have made it in. But you mm -hmm. know what? This is why. Again, prove them, prove people right who do say that Alabama should be in that that top four. 
Um, For sure. So I hope they dominate. But getting on to the bowl game they're playing in, it's the Sugar Bowl. New Orleans, a place we know well. Let's Very just, well, man. <laughs> let's talk Very about well. our experience there. That I can't even remember what year that – I'm trying to think what year that was. Uh, was it? Would it be 2017, 2018, somewhere in there, that season? Who did we, we play we, in that? Cle- Clemson? Yep, we beat Clemson in, in the semifinal. We did. We beat Matt, Clemson. I just remember because Mac Wilson posted something about it. He had that like crazy interception. Interception, like, yeah. He had a touchdown. Yeah. I, hey, I'm happy for you, Mac. I'm not I'm not I'm not not room for you, but you gotta Mac, get you on here though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, yeah, we gotta get you on here. Hey, and you know, he's a little excessive with social media. You know, he, Whoa, he, he, I, I, I I support it. I support it all the way. I mean, no, uh, I, I support it too, but but that you know, tweet did come up like 30 seconds after uh, the game. Uh did, I don't think it took that long. <laughs> um, but that experience though new orleans is a fun spot i mm-hmm. think people would want to know like what we did we so besides what we just did individually there's a lot yes. of other things that went on that were fun i think the sugar bowl i can remember you know we stayed in a hotel in a cool spot but i remember some of the fun things like we went out and we got like we did a dinner we had a hypnotist mm-hmm. come do you remember that everyone sitting yes. up in the chairs i was one of the guys he hypnotized till the end and I, I you were faking it weren't was- you I was not faking it. I was because probably 15 minutes out of the 20. And then like, the, I let them finish the rep, the last five. Okay. I, so, okay. I, I might've did fake it a little bit. So but, you, you, you're telling me it was all fake. Cause I was, I was so excited for the hypnotist to come. And before that we had the dinner, we show up. I remember people with like snakes, like voodoo women with snakes uh-huh. on them and stuff. They had Magicians, the card readers. Card games. One card person <laughs> came up to Jerry Judy. And this was mm-hmm. the funniest thing ever. It was me, oh, Jerry Judy, yeah. and I think Derek mm-hmm. Keefe. And they were reading Jerry Judy's poem or something or telling him something about uh-huh. his cards. He starts freaking out because Judy was like, the guy was like, hmm. He doesn't know Judy. Remember, he does not know Judy, all this stuff. There's mm-hmm. a woman, and she looks at his hand or something, and she's like, hmm, you play like a like a rapper. Like, there's a rapper. You follow his stuff, and you really <laughs> – and she was like, Kodak Black? Kodak Black? And Judy started <laughs> freaking out. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, this is actually crazy because I knew this Judy loved funny. Kodak. You know what uh, I'm saying? But, like, how does this Florida random boy. lady, magician mm-hmm. lady – know this i don't know but that was really fun doing that and then you did the hypnotist thing i knew all y'all faked it did you fake the whole thing no i didn't fake he had me for like the first 15 i promise you i i, I woke up i snapped out of it but i didn't want to let everybody know i really snapped out of it so i let him have his shine i didn't want to ruin it for the guy <laughs> now we get it and then what was something else so like on bowl trips you know we do a lot of fun things i really enjoyed the you know the bowl uh, trips we did did we do bowling no we didn't do bowling that trip we did um we went to that big Dave and Buster's, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big per, per diem card. They probably gave us hundred dollars. Just go do whatever you want. <laughs> yep. We went somewhere like that. But all in all, like it was just fun. They always do a great job of having the players lounge. I remember the Sugar Bowl player lounge being great. Hospitality room. Yep. Yes. And that was that they had the gift suite, which is something else they do on some bowl trips, especially for like mm-hmm. the national championship, which is where they all the players get a gift from like mm-hmm. the national championship. They have a room set up, and they got recliners in there. They got – I got a recliner. They had TVs, razors. PlayStations, Nintendo PlayStations, Switches, watches, Xboxes, purses, bags, you name it. They Everybody had, had eight points. Eight Go points? In it. Yeah, eight what'd points. You, what'd then, you spend your eight points on in that gift suite? Uh, well, that year, I probably – I think I got my mom a watch, and then uh, – I think I probably got myself the speaker system. That's the one I got. I got the speaker system. Four, I got four and four. that year a recliner that is still. You bought the recliner. I bought the recliner. There was a recliner for like eight points. So again, mm-hmm. like imagine for people who don't know, you it's called the gift suite. One of the most exciting probably like gift thing because some of the bowl games or whatever, they'll give us like a speaker. They'll say like mm-hmm. a championship thing on it. We got gift cards some years. But the gift mm-hmm. suite was one of my favorites because you can literally pick out whatever you want and they have this whole suite. So you walk in the player's lounge. They have it set up with everything with sheets of paper telling you what each mm-hmm. thing is. You got TVs, you got recliners, you got, like I said, Yeti coolers, you got mm. speaker systems, watches, everything. Rec- like just, it was all there and you get eight points and you get to go spend it. It was like a Christmas come early. Yeah. Oh, I, so yeah. I love that. I'm glad we remembered that. But the last thing I want to talk about is we had that hotel right near a casino we know well. <laughs> a little bit of Harris. Josh and I bonded over this big time because oh, we crushed yeah. it. Let's take uh, people. Let's go off record here, but we're on mm-hmm. record, but we're taking them off record kind of deal. <laughs> let's talk about what we were doing in our free time, Josh, in the small 45 minutes or the couple of hours we had with Harris at only 100-yard distance. 
You know? Oh, exactly. So all I remember a lot of times is just running across the street, just trying not to get hit to make it to the casino. <laughs> but no, Mac and I, any hour, on the hour, we any chance we got, oh, we were we were heading to the casino trying to trying to get us a table and, and win some money with the per diem cards. We had our whole little group. We had Johnny Dwight. We we had Derek Keith. It was Mac. We we. I was there. We we were lit. Like we, the, the lady was having having people bring us drinks to the table. Like it was just a whole event. Like I, I loved. It. I would never take anything back from it. It was awesome. I mean, you set the scene pretty well. It was pretty just awesome. Like that was one of the most fun things I would say on bowl trips. Obviously, we get to do the fun things as a team. Whether it's going go karting, mm -hmm. whether it's going to a magic show, whether it's going to like a theme park, like we did a community service event at the Orange Bowl or whatever that was. It was a ton of fun. To be with everybody and do that but then you had mm -hmm. the moments where you know you, you, you kind of have your clicks on the team you kind of have different yeah. people who mess with different people where you get time mm -hmm. to do what you want to do and i think the casino i know game was our thing it, it was our thing and the, the gambling i'm not like a huge like go gamble oh, everything no, like that no, no, but i will say we gambled we what's the we word? came up we came we up. came up <laughs> but what's the uh, responsibly we were responsible and mm -hmm. we were right next to the hotel. We weren't messing around in the streets down in whatever it's called. Um, what you got down Bourbon Street. Party on Bourbon Street. We weren't party partying. We were just sitting with the boys at a casino table, like having you said. Having a couple of drinks. Having a couple of drinks, like one or two, which is I think is very reasonable and great. Reasonable. Nothing and we had that lady who was electric, who was tossing out the cards. She loved our table. Like you said, mm -hmm. we got Johnny Dwight. I forget the name we came up with for Johnny because I remember I was up a lot of chips the first night and I ended mm -hmm. up giving him like a couple of chips. I mean, like here, like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like spreading the love. And then Johnny's stack comes up. It's like <laughs> blowing up because he was putting it on like the middle thing that wasn't yeah, even, uh -huh. you know, there was like you could, side, the side bet, the side bet. Yep, the side bet. And he was hitting the side <laughs> bet, the side bet king. And you got Derek Keith. Like we, we started calling him King Cutter because he came in there and mm -hmm. the lady asked him to cut the cards. And it was blackjack, and they're flipping the cards, mm -hmm. and we're hitting every time. The squad's going crazy. That yeah. was one of my favorite experiences about that game, and you know that by, that that time. By far, one of the best trips. I, I can definitely say I, I came out loaded and on top. <laughs> I did too. I remember us literally after that magician show. We like we had like forty five minutes to an hour, and you and I both were just yeah. like everyone else was kind of yeah. like sometimes in, sometimes out. You and mm -hmm. I, bang. There. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. we were going up like five hundred dollars six hundred dollars like every day and then the night day. after the game too instead of going out and partying and, and doing oh, that stuff man we stayed there until what seven seven like o'clock next seven morning o'clock <laughs> we barely made it back on the flight the next day like the next day oh my gosh boy man those were times those were times man. really good times man so i i hope they enjoy the sugar bowl i hope they you know Taking into consideration, this could be the last time they play together. Mm -hmm. Just every moment I would cherish. Like I it just, mm -hmm. it's incredible. You know, like again, like if if I could tell some to any guys who are in that position, like cherish every last second of it. I know yeah. there's stuff that goes on that's wrong. That like you know sometimes you feel like you're not playing a lot, or it's been a tough season, or you got banged up, like injured, and whatever it is. But like I would never take those memories back for anything. Uh, to be with the gang, bro. To be with the boys. Oh uh, no. Nah. Love, man. Love, dog. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Man. I guess that covers it up, though. I appreciate y'all tuning in. This has been a great show, great episode, Josh. It's always Come fun. I, I love doing week. this. I love doing this with you because it's like we just get to relive these experiences and memories. Um, sure. But come sure. back we next week, like it. Josh said. We have a lot of them.